watching Inside Utah Politics. We turn now to the race for U.S. Senate. Next year, Senator Mitt Romney's term is up. He has yet to announce his intentions, but Riverton Mayor Trent Staggs has officially launched his campaign. He's here to talk about why. Uh, Mayor, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, let's start off with background first, background slash resume. Talk about sure. what it is that you've done that got you to this point where you believe uh, you're ready to take on the role as U.S. Senator. Yeah, well, I'm a lifelong Utahan. I like to say from elementary school to graduate school, attended Utah schools, raised my family here, um, two children, and operated several businesses. Uh, I've actually taken a company public. We got listed on NASDAQ last year on the board of directors and uh, have run my community for the last 10 years, uh, six as mayor. And with all that local elected experience, I feel like we need to have somebody who's authentically Utahan and consistently conservative. And that's what I believe has typified my career. And with uh, that and so many people encouraging me to take a look at this and run for office, that's why my wife and I have decided to mm -hmm. go ahead and serve in this capacity. Uh, I, I started off the segment by saying Senator Romney has not made his intentions known just yet. This is obviously a completely different race if he's in versus if he's out. So when you take a look at that and you kind of assess the situation, how do you strategize and move forward given that it could be completely different depending on what he decides? Yeah. Well, no matter what he decides, we're in the race. And I think we're the only ones that have fully announced mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, we, we took a decision very boldly to go ahead and do this. And I think Mitt Romney and his voting record and the representation or lack thereof in the state is a great motivator as to why I'm in this race. Um, I've been very vocal about his record. He, he, five years ago, he claimed that he was gonna put us on a path to a balanced budget, he was gonna end illegal immigration, he'd stop federal spending and overreach, and he'd appoint conservative justices. His record does not at all reflect that, just the opposite. And uh, we know that he's had a hard time coming to state conventions. I'm a state delegate. He hasn't bothered to show up the last couple of years. I chaired the Salt Lake County GOP convention in March, uh, offered him the chance to come in person or do a video. He declined on all fronts. So I think it's more than just the voting record. Utahns deserve, they deserve a true conservative that can represent them and do just that, actually represent them and be there accountable. Okay, let's dig into that a little more. Specifically votes, what are some votes you take exception with and how would you have done that differently? Yeah, well, I think with omnibus spending, I mean, he's voted for trillions more in spending. Uh, I, I would have followed our Senator Mike Lee in that, where we have to get things under control. We're 32 to $33 trillion in debt right now. It's just reckless, reckless spending. Uh, the balanced budget, I mean, just in May, uh, here Mitt Romney indicates that's a huge priority for him. But Senator Lee had a letter to President Biden saying, look, I've got 42 other Republicans here that we're not gonna raise the debt ceiling unless we get substan substantial spending cuts and budget mm -hmm. reform. And Mitt Romney would not sign that letter. I would have been proud to put my name to that letter and I would have supported and held the line on debt ceiling negotiations without a doubt. And then conservative justices, uh, he, he's one of three Republicans that voted for Ketanji Brown Jackson. I think that's just a radical, radical associate justice. So you, you would have voted no on, on that uh, absolutely. nomination? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've talked with the senator and others who might look at that and say, well, we're not gonna get everything we want. We're not going to be able to do that. So why not meet in the middle, come to the table, negotiate, and try to get some of what we want in being able to move forward. What's wrong with that approach? Well, I think what's wrong with that approach is that the right seemingly is the only one willing to compromise. Every time we compromise, it costs us trillions of dollars. And so we have one side that's starting clear over here and unwilling to compromise and is very disciplined at that. And the other always trying to move a little bit in and, and just you see where has that gotten us today? Where has that gotten us today? We're trillions and trillions of dollars in debt, as mm -hmm. they indicated. Uh, we're nowhere closer to a balanced budget. We have taxes and a regulatory state that's out of control. We got a weaponization of uh, various departments. And it's, it's just, we, we, have to, we have to get back to a sense of normalcy. Yeah, and how do you do that given the makeup in Washington right now? Because there's not a lot of uh, bipartisanship and a lot of coming together. So if you were in that office, how would you specifically as one individual approach that to get those things done? Yeah, I, I think you have to clearly articulate what your stance is, and I've done that. At my website at TrentStags.com, I'm all about smaller government, safer families, and a stronger economy. First and foremost, I want to focus on that smaller government and say, hey, these are the things I really want to get done. And uh, the, the regulatory state, for example, if we could just focus on one thing in particular, like the RAINS Act, for example, mm -hmm. and really 
uh, stop abdicating Congress's responsibility to a regulatory state, a bunch of unelected bureaucrats. Let's pull that back in and take that in. Uh, that alone is going to make a huge difference in terms of changing the size and scope of our federal government. Uh, you brought up the the approach of our two different senators, uh, and, and you have said you would have gone the route Senator Lee would. Would you say you and him would be very similar in your voting record and, and what you do if you were elected to the Senate? I think so. I think so. That, that is definitely, Senator Mike Lee is one uh, senator that I admire. It's one whom I would hope to emulate. Um, there are a number of others, too, in, in the Senate, in the U.S. Senate, some great conservatives that we have there. And I would definitely want to be their ally in the Senate. That's what Utahns want. As I'm going around traveling the state, that's what I'm hearing. Utahns want and deserve another true conservative like Mike Lee. And I think just having one more true conservative in the Senate is going to move us in a direction uh, that this country needs to be. And it's not just Utahns that, that are wanting that. It's people across the country. And that's why we've actually received small dollar donations from every single state in this country from conservatives that have recognized that need. Uh, that, that's an interesting point. Because again, we don't know the complete makeup of this race, but if it is, Senator Romney obviously has the power of incumbency. He'll have the money, for sure. Uh, so what would be your strategy in the event that it is a, a race between the two of you? Yeah, he definitely will, but he's got very high name ID. And as I'm going around the state, I'm, no I'm noticing that uh, people have already formulated their opinions about Senator Romney. I, I think he's in that 30 to 40 percent range in terms of favorability amongst Republican voters. And so uh, we're just going to keep going about doing what we're doing. We're going to uh, talk about our message of conservatism, of, you know, constitutional conservatism. And uh, that is what's really resonating with people. If he's not in the race, uh, you, you would have to think a a lot of people will start to jump in. Uh, are you surprised more people aren't jumping in at this point like you to try to, you know, get your name out there and start the campaign? I, I really haven't thought much about that. We've, uh, we entered the race uh, about two and a half months ago or mm -hmm. so, and it's been overwhelming, the response. I mean, we've already picked up endorsements from national conservatives like Mark Levin and Charlie Kirk and Harmie Dillon, and we've got scores of elected officials here in the state of Utah that have endorsed our candidacy as well. And so we're just moving. We're building this coalition every single day. As, as you, you talked about going around and, and listening to people, what are they saying is impacting them the most, and how would you uh, take that on. Yeah, it's the size, scope, burden of the federal government on the average, everyday Utah. Um, it's just enormous right now, the impact of that. And so that's why smaller government is, is number one for me. We want to go ahead and get a balanced budget. We want to be able to attack the regulatory state, bring a, bring a chainsaw, I say, to that. Uh, we need substantial change in that area to reduce the size, scope, burden of the government on the average everyday Utah. Also, I'm hearing a lot about safer families, um, a lot of wokeism and woke progressive ideology that's really been endorsed by this administration, the Biden administration, and pushed down all throughout the country, including our state. And Utahns don't want that. They want a wall of separation between woke and state, and I would do just that. What are some committees that you would eye if you were in Washington? What would you want to sit on and why? Yeah, I, I love finance. Uh, that's part of my background, you know, part of it um, post um, MBA school. Uh, I've got a, a pretty good experience in that area. So finance, uh, I love small business and entrepreneurship. Uh, I've been a, a business owner. I've helped take a company public, as I indicated. And so I think I could add a lot of value on those committees. And I also think public lands. I mean, that's a big issue I'm hearing too in the state, that the federal government owns or controls two thirds of our lands here in this state. And it's, it's unbelievable. Back east, maybe 5% on average. So we need somebody who's really gonna be a mover in that area too. And I think by sitting on that committee, uh, we can move the ball. Okay, uh, anyone sitting at home interested in learning more about you and your positions, where can they do so? They can go to trentstags.com, that's S-T-A-G-G-S, uh, trentstags.com, and, and we would love to have their support. All right, uh, a big election year in 2024, something we'll be keeping an eye on. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Inside Utah Politics.